So this is doing some Bible journaling and if you don't know what that is, hopefully you will find out. Um, this is a kind of classic journaling Bible that I've got here, which has your text in the middle and it has a bit of space down the side. Some of them have lines, some of them are blank for you to draw and to write in. Um, but if you don't have one of these, you can also do Bible journaling in just a regular kind of notebook, sketchbook, where you've got some plain pages and you can use that to write the Bible verse out and then decorate however you choose. So that's the kind of thing that you can do as well if you don't have access to a journaling Bible. So what is it? Why would you do it? Well, for me, it's a way of responding to what I read in the Bible. And yeah, just kind of simply that, making me spend time thinking it over and responding to it. So today I was thinking about showing um, how sometimes I just do one word and that's the main emphasis of what I'm doing. So for instance here, um, my main word is about forgetting something. So that's the main bit and the rest of it is just in colour. Or here, a bit more fancy lettering that you can find online. Um, but the, the word is a word that I found in the scripture that I then am focusing on. And on this one, it's literally just one word without other colouring in the background um, about putting our hope in God and those are letters that I found online and then just spent time colouring them in and doing extra details on those ones. You can make it simple or complicated, it is entirely up to you. Um, for devotionals, sometimes I really like using um, the Version app that you can get and so I'm actually going to be spending some time going through a devotional here called Daring to Hope and it is by Katie Davis Majors. So this devotional, um, she starts off about her time in Uganda and she says she went to Uganda believing that beauty could be found in all things. I thought this beauty was found in a happy ending. I unknowingly believed that God's blessing was evident only when things turned out well. And so I kept asking and waiting for the beauty to be revealed on my own terms. I wanted to write a story that tied up nicely with a bow on top, the story with a happy ending that I wanted, pretty and neat and not painful or confusing. But I found through deep loss that some stories don't end the way I wanted them to. I looked around at my Ugandan brothers and sisters, also fervent believers in Christ and all the ways that their stories were not ending in the ways that they planned or desired either. I knew women who were faithful wives and mothers faithful to the word of God, who still had to pick through heaps of trash to find something to feed their children at the end of the day. I knew families who loved their children just as much as I love mine, but I had to watch them die because they didn't have access to affordable medical care. I knew children left parentless due to preventable to treatable diseases. Everywhere I looked, suffering abounded. This realisation left me with two explanations. Either God is not who he says he is, or he is, and I needed to relearn how to know him even in hardship. I devoured scripture in a new way, trying to find the answers to my questions. I read the words of Romans 8.32 over and over. God gives us all things we need. Could I believe that God was giving everything I needed, even when it wasn't what I wanted? I knew that I had to learn to believe this for me, for my children, for those we were serving. We needed to believe that God, who gave his son, was giving us all that we needed, and that beauty enough, and that was beauty enough, even without a happy ending. I will make this beautiful too, God whispers. Could he? And I pray over and over again, O oh Lord, give me eyes to see. In what ways is God giving you everything you need right now, and how is he making these things beautiful? So, I really like a devotional that has a, a good question to help you ponder it and think about, um, yeah, what is the... The Bible saying. So, you know, I kind of read that, turn to Romans 8.32, um, which says, for he, for who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Now, on this page here, I've already done some stuff on the other side. Um, I've got a little quote at the top from a sermon I heard, and so it ends up being a bit of a collage of different experiences at different times, different times that I've um, added things to my Bible and journal and I really like that, that it's just a, a mixture of all sorts of things and different experiences and different things that I study at different times. Um, but for now, I've written out the questions here, um, the things that you know she highlights through this text about God making things beautiful. Um, 
and the question, in what ways is God giving you everything you need right now? Um, obviously, if you're doing this on your own, then it's really good to spend a bit of time just thinking that through before you crack on with doing some Bible journey. You know, ponder it, chew it over, um, think about all those kind of things, which I've already done. So I've then gone on to, um, this is the section of text there. I've done a bit of pencil highlighting of some words because the words that I want to emphasise in this is all things. That um, Actually, this is God's promise to us. It's, it's not just the things that we want, but actually he's giving us everything. So I've got like a silver pen and I was just going to go around some of these letters that I've got on here. Um, maybe you can just do that. Um, with this is that if you're doing lettering that goes right to the edge, um, it's really easy to run out of space. Uh, and obviously you need a certain amount of space for each letters. So I often start at this end and I'll do the S first and then I'll go backwards. And that way I've got enough space to fit in all of the letters that I need, having made that mistake a few too many times. So I've got some letters and my plan is I'm going to do some colouring on the background behind that. But I also want to answer some of these questions and, and think that through. And so this one is going to be a bit more about writing and response. And so I've got all this space here and I can use that for answering the questions about um, what is God giving me that I need right now. So um, you can you know, write answers on a bit of scrap paper first or you can just write direct in there. Um, it's entirely up to you. I've put some of the answers to the questions. I've also written the question down here so that I kind of remember why I've responded in this way. Um, sometimes I go over it because my pen's a bit scratchy. Um, I can make it a little bit bolder. Um, but these fine line pens are really nice and they don't tend to go through to the next page, which is great. Um, and from that, then I'm just going on to some really simple coloured pencils. Um, quality ones do tend to work better because they actually don't break and they give a really good coverage. And so this is just going to be that, then lots of colour around it. Um, sort of picking out some of my favourite colours that I think bring a bit of joy and a bit of hope to life. So I'm just sort of going around these, which will then make the lettering stand out a bit more once I've done that. Um, I quite like light letters on a dark background. Um, there's a change from sometimes having dark letters, but that's just kind of me. Um, and then on the other words that I've written as well, I'll actually go around and give them a bit of a white background and then dark letters on top of that. Um, and all the time when you're colouring and that, it really is just an opportunity to just keep thinking about what the truth is in the words that you read. Um, it's an easier way for me to spend longer um, lingering in scripture rather than just reading and moving on. Um, and so hopefully it helps it go in a bit more and I can then remember a bit better because I've spent longer really just chewing over what this actually means for me. What is God saying to me today through it? like having bolder edges that are closer to some of my letters that then fade out a little bit. Um, and, you know, coloured pencils are great because you can just make them go lighter and lighter as you gradually go out and it makes a nice kind of fade thing and you can go over when you want them to be a bit darker. Um, never used to really like using coloured pencils, but I love them now. Um, so then when I've done a bit of that, then I think actually I still want a bit more colour. Um, what am I going for? I'm um, going to go for a bit of orange I think. And then you kind of layer it over and then you can have some more colour coming out from that. Um, just to add even more kind of emphasis to things. Um, and you can just carry on adding as much as you like to it. Um, a lot of the time my ones are quite heavy on colour. Um, some people find that they just do a bit more that are words because they're more of a word person. 
Um, and that's a great thing. It can just kind of reflect at that. I'm going to just blend that in. So on this one, you can pretty much read all of the text that's underneath. Sometimes um, I've ended up doing it and you actually can't read much of the text. That doesn't bother me. Um, but if you want to, you can just literally use this space down the side and nothing needs to go over the text at all. Um, I've got other Bibles that I use if I really want to just read the Bible. Um, but this is my one that I read to remind me of things that I've felt God was saying to me at different points and um, yeah, remind me of the time that I've spent just enjoying um, thinking through the Word of God and just responding in a very small way to some of what is written in it. Um, And previously, I'd have probably thought some of the answers to God giving us all things is much more about the the physical things that we're given. But at this time, it's much more about the spiritual strength and hope that I think we're being given because some of the physical stuff is so uncertain um, that it's really good to be able to focus on the the other things that God gives to us, um, the other ways that He takes care of us as well as um, taking care of our physical needs. And so that's kind of where I've ended up in responding about how graciously God gives us things. Um, when I was doing the one in my notebook, I kind of got some lettering and I thought about maybe having some gifts coming down and, you know, drawing some of those on there. So I haven't got around to doing that yet, but that's a possibility. Um, and generally, it's really good to date things as well so that you can remember what you're experiencing at the time when this scripture really spoke to you. And it can be a bit of a diary of things that God has said. <laughs> 